Good evening, and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of September 8th, 2015. Ms. Bark, please call the roll. Commander Delcourt. Here. Commander McCauley. Here. Commander Sirachi. Here. Deputy Mayor Bruchette. Here. Mayor Thompson. Here. Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, the notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on September 8, 2015. First up this evening, we have the approval of the April 14, 2015 Executive Session Minutes. May I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Raymond Delcourt. Yes. Raymond McCauley. Yes. Raymond Sirachi. Abstain. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, now, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 11th, 2015 regular meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Raymond Delcourt. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Raymond Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes, now we're going to move on to reports from committee liaisons. First up, can we move in Delcourt? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, first thing, uh, next week, next Wednesday the 16th, uh, we'll be holding our um, semi-annual uh, EBDC networking social. Uh, this one will be a little bit different as we'll hold it at uh, Doyle's Unami Farm. The event will run from 5 to 8 p.m. on next Wednesday the 16th. And uh, we'll include a pig roast, uh, hay rides, and, and a corn maze. Registration is required, $20 per regist uh, to register in advance. Uh, that's by this Thursday, September 10th, or $25 if you register uh, beyond the 10th, through the 11th through the 14th. As always, uh, we use this opportunity to allow our businesses to network and um, use the opportunity to, to meet each other. Um, we do uh, like to have these a couple times a year. And uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate as this will be an outside event. If we do have an issue with the rain, the rain date will be Thursday, September the 17th. Um, this past weekend, uh, you may have noticed that some of our softball fields, uh, particularly singly, and um, our, uh, our fields at Woodfield East and West, uh, Chernikowski fields, uh, there was a softball tournament being run by uh, Top Gun Softball. Uh, and it was for the benefit of um, of Embrace the Kids, which is a charity that helps families where their children have some type of catastrophic illness, uh, cancer, sickle cell, blood disorders, and the like. Um, it is the 12th year that they've run the tournament. Um, we have uh, a couple people from that have been uh, instrumental in, in uh, Hillsborough softball. Larry Yard and Tony Houck were uh, helped run the, the, uh, the event. We had 22 teams. Uh, from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. We played 52 games over, over that two-day window on Saturday and Sunday of this past weekend. And uh, the, uh, the event raised about $14,000 that all went to the foundation. Uh, so it was a, a wonderful event. Over the last 12 years, uh, the event has raised about $120,000 for the Embrace the Kids Foundation. So uh, I certainly want to thank the uh, the uh, organizers, uh, Top Gun Softball in particular, Larry and Tony, but also, um, and uh, this came from, uh, from the groups that were participating, special thanks to our Parks and Recreation group for uh, getting the fields in, in great shape, getting them whatever they needed uh, for the event. And uh, I'd like to thank Ron Scobo and John Crossan and their teams for, uh, for their support in the, uh, in the event. Uh, I got a chance to stop by there on Sunday and uh, the kids were very excited uh, to be playing, and uh, it was a very competitive tournament, so I was glad I got a chance to get over there, but more importantly, it was for a, for a very good cause, and they raised a lot of money, so I'd like to thank them all for that. Uh, regarding uh, recreation as well, um, our fall programs and activities are now open. Uh, we have uh, tiny sports classes from ages four to six, which includes uh, tiny wiffle ball football and fall sports fun. 
Um, we have big chefs for grades five to eight, uh, some new activities, young crafters uh, from K to three, and uh, also offering a Zumba class for adults. That's new this year. Uh, listing of all the program is in the, uh, in the fall activities guide and registration for all can be completed on the uh, recreation website. We'll also be having our uh, annual Township Halloween party. This year it's set for Thursday, October the 29th. That'll be 4.30 p.m. here at the Municipal Complex. Uh, it'll run from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. And uh, as always, we'll complete with the hayride uh, to pick a pumpkin and to visit the haunted house and goodie bags. And pre-registration is required and be can be completed via the Township website. Um, also new this year, uh, as you all know, we've, uh, at least I hope you know now, uh, we've opened our, our new dog park over at Ann Van Park. Uh, it opened over the summer. It sits behind uh, softball field number two. It is double gated and fenced in, so it's a leash free environment for the dogs, ages six months and above, and it gives the dogs a chance to socialize and exercise with their owners. Uh, a couple of the rules for the dog park, dogs must be spayed or neutered and cannot show any signs of aggression. Uh, complete listing of the rules and regulations for the new facility can be found in Ordinance 2015-11 and Chapter 221 of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough. Uh, the rules are, um, are also posted at the, uh, at the park. And with that, we'll, have a, uh, we'll also have a doggy Halloween party. Uh, so anyone that uh, has uh, the desire to dress their dog up uh, wants to come over to the dog park, uh, that'll be Saturday the 31st uh, on Halloween day starting at 1030 and uh, there'll be a uh, costume uh, contest that'll go on at, at that event. So anyone that wants to bring their dog out to the dog park for that day, please come on out. And uh, one last thing regarding social services, a uh, reminder we're having our senior Olympics. That'll be, um, that's our second annual. It's going to be held on Friday, October the 2nd with a rain date of Monday, October the 5th. And uh, we had great participation last year. I believe we'll have greater participation this year. And some of the events include basketball, uh, bean bag toss, pickleball, ladder ball, golf, bocce, and horseshoes. And medals are awarded for the various uh, events. Fee is $10 per, per participant and includes a participation in the games and a commemorative t-shirt. And uh, lunch is also available for those that would like to uh, partake in lunch. Pre-registration is required um, for both the event and the lunch, and please contact our social services department uh, if you'd like to register. We look forward to seeing all our seniors there. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Committee Woman McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just a quick update for um, our Hillsborough Township Sustainable Steering Committee has recently released five informational brochures. Uh, there's some various topics there, composting guide, information on invasive plants, environmentally friendly leaf and lawn care, recycling resources, and water conservation. The brochures will assist people in making those sustainable choices for their homes and families and are for informational purposes only. Um, they can be found on our township website and they're also available at the planning and zoning department for those uh, people who are interested in doing composting and some other things that make your home more sustainable. In 2013, our township awarded a small capacity building grant in the amount of $2,000. A portion of that grant was dedicated to support the community garden in the form of supplies, such as garden materials, tools, benches, in addition to building materials to construct an on-site compost bin used to, uh, in conjunction with our community garden at the church. The composting allows the garden waste on site to be composted back into the garden and then re reduces the carbon footprint. So it's a nice little community garden over at Hillsborough Garden right on 206 if you get a chance to stop by and support it. It also does, I believe, send some of the food and proceeds over to the Duke Farms uh, for their, for their um, fresh produce as well. Anybody who wants to volunteer or um, wants further information for that, you can visit by going to hillsboroughcommunitygarden.org. Also, our new hours at our library that will be opening on Sunday again from 1 to 5 p.m. starting on September 13th. The library will also be holding its third annual Small Business Expo on Saturday, October 3rd from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. They can support uh, small businesses and Somerset County by coming to meet the business owners who will introduce their products and services. And if you're getting inspired and encouraged to uh, come out and see it because they, they will definitely give you information on starting your own business and discuss opportunities um, to support your organization and then to support each other. 
Finally, from the library, September's library card sign-up month. 68 local businesses have teamed up with Somerset County Library System and are offering discounts when patrons show their library card at the time of purchase. Be sure to check out more information on the library's website, where you can always contact the township for further information. That's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Sirachi. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just have a credit card uh, program update. The Credit Card Advisory Committee is now accepting grant applications for the full grant cycle. Applications are available for Hillsborough Township-based nonprofit senior and youth organizations to apply for grants up to $2,000 funded through the Hillsborough Township Rewards Credit Card Program. Uh, prior uh, funding rounds, uh, the limit was $1,000, so uh, the program is going strong that we're able to go up to $2,000. Uh, the application can be found online or is available in the administration office. The deadline to submit your application is September 30th, so there's not a lot of time for this. This tends to be a short cycle, otherwise you'll have to wait till next spring. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, get an application and, uh, and uh, get it submitted uh, in time for consideration. Um, now the program uh, through the grant application process is a great resource for qualifying local organizations to obtain funding for needed equipment. Uh, the concept is, you know, utilize your Hillsborough Rewards Visa credit card, receive rewards points. Uh, the Hills or the uh, Affinity Federal Credit Union then sends a percentage of what's charged on that card to the trust fund without any expense to Hillsborough taxpayers. So obviously, it's a win-win for everyone. And if you don't have a credit card, um, just look for this <coughs> application form has all the information where you can apply either online or go directly to the Hillsborough branch at the Hillsborough Promenade. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Burchett. All right, from the Department of Public Works, we are now going to have a grass recycling drop-off available at the Otten Road dump site on every third Friday of the month. Drop-off hours would be between 11 a.m. and 3 only grass and leaves will be accepted. We will not accept brush or any other debris uh, at that site. But one of the things you're going to have to do is when you come, you're going to have to take the grass out of the bags and take the bags with you. And, um, and a proof of residency will be required. From the Shop Hillsborough program, we now have 86 businesses participating in the program. Each week um, at the Friday e-newsletter, we will have an update on who those businesses are and who has recently joined the program and any monthly specials that they may be offering. If you have not received your Shop Hillsborough card, they are still available at the Township Administrative Office. Also, please register your card and start getting the credits and getting the uh, credits you need off your property taxes. More information and individual offers are available on the Shop Hillsborough website, which is www.propertytaxcard.com slash Hillsborough. Again, that's propertytaxcard.com slash Hillsborough. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, a couple things for me this evening. Uh, first, uh, I attended a ribbon cutting ceremony at All Day Learning Center a few weeks ago. Uh, we actually have one of the owners in the room now, Fred Gladstone. Uh, so you know, All Day Learning Center is a child care facility here in Hillsborough. But the amazing thing about it was that within seven years, uh, they've tripled their employees and their size. Uh, it's a great small business. And congratulations, Fred, and, and to your family for that hard work and getting that open. Congratulations. Uh, in case you haven't heard, uh, which means you've been living under a rock for the past month, Money Magazine ranked Hillsborough once again among the best places to live in America for 2015. We'll be having a presentation a little bit later on the agenda this evening. Uh, Hillsborough was the only town in New Jersey named to this list for the 2015 Best Small Town Rankings. And this is the fourth time Hillsborough has been named to the list in recent years. For 2015, we were ranked 30th in the nation. Money Magazine considers various criteria in their annual rankings of the best place to live segment. Demographics are compared and ranked accordingly, including community spirit, culture, diversity, education, health, outdoor activities, parks, quality of life, and safety. Hillsborough was ranked against towns consisting of a population range of 10,000 to 50,000 in this biannual small town ranking. And again, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, TV 29, so everyone's aware, we recently introduced Hillsborough The Good Life on TV 29 and on YouTube. And it's a 30-minute informational series about the township, upcoming events, and other pertinent information about Hillsborough. 
The first episode, which is currently airing on TV 29 daily at uh, 1 p.m. and 10 p.m., features highlights from the Green Living and Wellness Fair, the Township's Independence Day celebrations, uh, information from the Health Department, Parks and Recreation, as well as an update from the Township Committee meetings and various recognition segments of our residents. And episode two will be released later this month, so please stay tuned. As a reminder about our town calendar, if you'd like to submit any uh, photos of any scenery or local landscapes for the 2016 town calendar, which will be sent free of charge to every resident, uh, supported by advertisements, please send in your high resolution photo to the township clerk at pborak, B O R E K, at hillsborough nj.org. Also, Hillsborough Township will again participate in the New Jersey Devils My Town series uh, on December 11th in a game against the Detroit Red Wings. We're not going to do the Philadelphia Flyers, so we don't have to see our administrator cry again. Um, <laughs> this is the second time this year we have been chosen to participate in the series, and I and uh, Hillsborough will be featured at the game. We have more information and tickets uh, coming in the next couple weeks. Uh, also, Hillsborough Township is now on Twitter. We've always been looking for additional ways to communicate with our residents to ensure that you are more informed about the township. And we currently have our Friday e-news, which you are not signed up for. There are these cards in the back. Please fill them out. We have our Honeywell Incident Alert, six, alert System, and we have our Nixle for Alert System for Emergencies Related. Um, but now we also have Twitter, so you can follow on there as well. You can see all that and all the different links from the social media page on the township's website. Also, as a reminder, our community map uh, is uh, currently getting ready to be completed for by the end of September. You can uh, sign up for additional information on that by paying attention to the e-news. Now we're going to move on to proclamations and presentations this evening. Well, I ask that after you receive your proclamation and presentation that you do resume your seat and wait uh, for everyone else to receive their recognition tonight. Uh, afterwards, we will take a brief pause, which will allow everyone to depart. Also, if you'd like to see any of the photo photos that are taken this evening, again, Sign up for the e-news and you'll be able to get all that information on there. Uh, first up this evening, uh, we have a proclamation uh, proclaiming September as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. If you could please come forward. by proclaiming September 2015 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, we call attention to a disease that affects women across our country, state, and county, with the American Cancer Society estimating that 15,000 American women are projected to lose their lives to ovarian cancer this year. And whereas these women are mothers, daughters, sisters, grandmothers, community members, and cherished friends, and their absence they leave in our hearts will be deeply felt forever. And whereas women who are middle aged and older, who have family history of ovarian or breast cancer, or have had certain cancers in the past or at increased risk for developing ovarian cancer, and whereas ovarian cancer knows no boundaries, the disease can strike anyone across lines of age, ethnicity, and race, and whereas because of ovarian cancer often goes undetected until advanced stages, increasing the awareness of risk factors and cri critical to fighting this disease, it is estimated that about 22,000 new cases of ovarian cancer will be diagnosed in the United States this year. And whereas the public awareness campaign strives to increase knowledge about this disease and recognizes the best defense against ovarian cancer is early detection, therefore it is essential that women know the risk factors associated with the disease and that men are educated so they can help their sisters, mothers, aunts, grandmothers, girlfriends, and wives. And whereas this month is dedicated to the prevention and awareness, it is also to honor those we have lost, show our support for women who bravely carry on the fight, and take action to lessen this tragic toll ovarian cancer takes on families across our country. Now therefore, be proclaimed that we, the Mayor of the Township Committee of Township of Hillsborough, do hereby recognize September 2015 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month and call upon citizens, government agencies, organizations, healthcare providers, and research institutions to raise ovarian cancer awareness and continue helping women live longer, healthier lives, and urge women to talk to their healthcare providers to learn more about the disease. Would you like to say a couple words about, um, sorry, your association? Um, I volunteer. My name is Susan Timko. I lost my mother to ovarian cancer eight years ago. First, I want to thank you and everybody here for signing and declaring it this month. 
and um, thank you to Sarah in the office. Her, she lost her mother to ovarian cancer, so she has a reason and a more impact to help too. So this year she asked if there's anything else that can be done, and I said, well, I'd love to have more people know about it and, and help us put up the teal bows. So I created a flyer and she sent that out and we had like 14 people this year and we had you know kids because their grandmother had passed away or was a survivor. So we had several survivors and people who had lost their loved ones. So I volunteer with Turn the Town's Teal. It's an organization based here in New Jersey. And um, Gail McNeil, she started the foundation in 2007. She has ovarian cancer. She has it had it. She passed in 2008. Her family carries it on along with the volunteers. And what it is, is putting up, if you saw when you came in, all the teal bows outside. Many towns, it started out with 14 towns, and now it's like very high numbers across. I mean, there's Puerto Rico and <laughs> different, all over the country in so many states. So for me, my dream is to see every town have the teal bows and people not ask, oh, what is that for? You know? So, um, Yes, awareness with, with anything to catch it in an early stage is very important. So, again, thank you so much, and I really, really appreciate it. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, so you can go, there's multiple, you can Google, just Google ovarian cancer and ovarian cancer symptoms, but the organization that I volunteer for is turnthetownsteal.org, and you can also go to ovariancancer.org as well, and they have all the lists of the symptoms, and I have some of these symptom cards that I will... Um, if I can, leave at the, the desk maybe, and when people come in and we can leave them there for the month. And it, on the card, the organization created these and it has a list of symptoms on it. Okay, next up we have the 2015 Hillsborough 13U Gold Travel Baseball Team. I think that's you guys. Come on up. The 2015 Hillsborough 13U, 13U Gold Travel Baseball Team had a very successful season because of their hard work and dedication. And whereas the Hillsborough 13U U Gold Travel Baseball Team comprised of the following young athletes. I'm not even trying to say the same name. Pass it on. Jason Wolf. Eric Wyatt. Joey Mistretta. Andre Shefflin. Andrew Rigel. Will Shokoff. Will and Jane. Pat Cassidy. No, you got a ringer. I'm just saying. <laughs> I can tell you why you won. And whereas the Hillsborough 13 U Gold Travel Baseball Team, coached by manager Kevin Levinitis, coach Steve Sweats. I got it right this time, right, guys? Thank you. <laughs> coach Paul Michnard and coach Jeff Wyatt. And whereas the Hillsborough 13 U Gold Travel Baseball Team earned the title of New Northern New Jersey 13 U Babe Ruth State Champions. The first time a team from the Hillsborough Baseball League has won a state championship and went to, on to be the semifinalist in the middle, middle Atlantic Regional Playoffs. And whereas the Hillsborough 13-year gold travel baseball team finished the season as a four-time District 10 champions, a USA BL Spring League champions, and the Jersey Shore Beach Blast champions. Now therefore, be proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough, do hereby commend all the members of the Hillsborough 13U Gold Travel Baseball Team, not only for the awards and championships they have won, but also for their unwavering teamwork, dedication, and sportsmanship throughout the season. Be it further proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Township Committee, further commend the Hillsborough 13U Gold Travel Baseball Team for the honor that they have brought to themselves, their team, and our community through their many achievements. Congratulations, guys. Where's the coach? 
Thank you, Mayor Thompson, and, and the committee. Thank you very much for recognizing these young men. Uh, we're all very proud of them as parents and coaches. They went over and beyond what we ever expected them to do. Um, they were undefeated in July, which is an incredible task to start with, and then uh, pre uh, presented or acted like gentlemen and represented Hillsborough very well in the state championship. Thank you. Okay, now we have something a little different this evening. As I mentioned before, uh, Hillsborough Township was recently honored as one of the best towns in America. So I'm going to ask my colleagues from the Township Committee to come on down. Uh, also, Anthony and Pam, if you can come down as well, because you're certainly part of this award. Uh, we have our assembly delegation here this evening. We have Jack Chitarelli and Dinah Simon. We have our freeholder director, Mark Caliguire. We have Pat Walsh, our deputy director, or Peter Palmer, our freeholder director, if you guys can come forward too. And also our amazing community partners, uh, our Hillsborough Board of Ed, Dr. Jordan Schiff, and from Duke Farms, that was also named in the article, Michael Catania, if you can come forward as well, because uh, we're all part of this award. At this time, I'm gonna hand over the microphone to Hillsborough's own Jack Cittarelli. Uh, just, I believe he's got a presentation for us this evening. Good evening, everybody. What's that? Slash. I, I like the way Rochette doesn't just say slash, he acts slash. Uh, what Rochette didn't say is that if you can't get your grass clippings to the dump, he will come and pick them up. And that's one of the things that makes this such a great community. Thank so. you. Um, what is the format here? Are, are, are the freeholders going to follow Don and I with a few words yes. and their proclamation and what? Would you like to say to My colleague, Donna Simon from the State Senate. We are so very proud of Hillsborough. Um, it's funny because uh, this afternoon I was speaking to one of your residents and I was joking around and said, you know, they really should share because not only did they win this, but Money Magazine in 2013, the number 16th spot in the top 50 places to live. New Jersey, 2013, top 10 best towns in New Jersey. The top 20 safest places by SafeWise in 2014 and recognized by its own tax base and everything that you have to offer for all of your residents in the community. And I said, you know, they really should share more. And the, your resident said, no way, Jose. <laughs> so congratulations. We are so very proud to be here, um, both the county and for the legislature. Um, nobody does it better. So thank you. Chief, I forgot to call you up. So Chief Paul Kaminsky, you can come forward. I, I'd ask you to come forward because uh, our town safety was named in the article as well. And I'd certainly appreciate it if you could come forward. Thank you. Senator uh, Kip Bateman sends his regards. He had another commitment tonight, but he certainly extends his congratulations. And um, a town doesn't get this kind of recognition without dynamic and progressive leadership from every single corner. I know the mayor and, and the township committee would be the first ones to admit that it comes from all corners of the community. Uh, it takes great leadership, progressive leadership, dynamic leadership in places like Duke Farms. Thank you, Mike Attenu. Our school system, thank you, Jordan Schiff, and our great school board. Um, all of our houses of worship, our volunteer organizations, and 37,000 citizens making contributions in small and large ways every single day of the year is what makes this such a great place. I'm proud to call it home. Don and I are certainly proud that it's part of the 16th Legislative District. And with all that in mind, I won't read all the whereases, but just the last. Right, Pat Walsh? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, this legislature, the New Jersey legislature, hereby honors the citizens of the township of Hillsborough and extends best wishes to the township 
for continued success and prosperity in the decades to come. Thank you, Mayor. And with that, Freehold Director Mark Calgo. So anybody who sat through the first 10 minutes of this meeting and heard the various township committee members list the things that are going on in Hillsborough over the next week or two um, would have to agree that, that uh, they said one of the things I guess Money Magazine included was township spirit and the number of, uh, of activities for residents. Well, you have stuff going on from everywhere from your dogs, we even have a Halloween party, <laughs> all the way up to seniors and everything in between. It really is dynamic. And so, you know, you really, it's not hard to figure out why. And, and like Jack alluded to, this doesn't happen by accident. It's about leadership over the years. So if you look around this room, you see pictures of various township committees and all the leaders who've made Hillsborough what it is. Um, it's dynamic leadership, like Jack said, and um, you've done an amazing job um, from the Freeholder Board, who's happy to have you guys in Somerset County, really, uh, to be one of the top towns in, in the United States. Uh, we're so proud of what you guys have accomplished and what a great place this is. So thanks. Thanks for having me. Mike, I don't know if you want to say a couple words? I'd just like to say how how proud Duke Farms is to be a part of Hillsborough and uh, everything that everyone has said here tonight I think uh, we, we really share. Uh, it's an amazing place and every weekend as I watch all of the families exploring Duke Farms I realize what a magical place this is with the, the diversity and uh, people who just really love the outdoors and really take advantage of everything that Hillsborough has to offer. So we're delighted to be here tonight. Thank you, Mayor. We're just happy to be um, part of such a wonderful community. Great schools, great leadership, great place to live, great place to raise your kids. Congratulations. So just from uh, my perspective real quick, it, it's truly an honor to be mayor. And with this township committee, um, you know, over the years, uh, you've seen now uh, four times we've been named to this list, it's no secret, we, we work really hard here, but we're very lucky to have leadership at the county and at the state level. Uh, we thank you all for everything you guys do. It's great to have great community partners like the school and Duke Farms. Uh, we're very lucky, this is my hometown and I've always said this is the greatest place to live in America and it's great when we get recognized by outside people, not just me and my mom and dad talking about how great it is to live. So uh, thank you to everyone for honoring us. We do greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, we do have a small cake here, so I'm uh, looking at the 13 you guys. Um, <laughs> sure, you guys can help us out with uh, getting rid of this thing tonight. So again, thank you everyone for recognizing us tonight. We do appreciate it and for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you everyone for patience and presentations. We do appreciate it, uh, everyone coming out. And again, thank you to our assembly members our freeholders uh, to Michael Catania from Duke Farms and to Dr. Jordan Schiff uh, for being here from our schools uh, and of course our chief of police uh, as well for being part of that we do recognize all the hard work that everyone has put into this uh, that makes Hillsborough one of the best towns in America so again thank you everyone for attending and being part of that <coughs> now we're going to move on to new business since there is no new business this evening we're going to move on to public comment on new business and matters not on the agenda. Is there any public comment on matters not on the agenda this evening? Seeing none, we're going to move on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. If you could please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Maria Janusik, property owner, 2155 Camp Lane Road, Hillsboro. Maria, you said? Maria Janusik. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have some questions regarding the uh, New Jersey Racing Commission public hearing. The public hearing that was held at the high school? That or was at the high school, okay. yes. Yes. Because uh, what, was, what was advertised in the newspaper was that the application for the um, off-track wagering license was uh, submitted by the New Jersey Sports and Exposition uh, Authority, but Hillsboro uh, has an ordinance, uh, ordinance 2014-05 that states that it was the um, Darby Development LLC that had submitted the application and there was a uh, uh, financial agreement that was part of all of this. 
So I wanted to find out what's what's going on with, with the application, who actually applied, did Darby apply, what happened to Darby's application, what happened to the uh, financial agreement? Well, as far as who applied to the New Jersey Racing Commission, uh, that would be the New, Jer New Jersey Racing Commission would have that authority, but we are lucky to have our attorney who's been working on this matter from the beginning of this uh, from the beginning of this project here this evening. So, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Eric Bernstein, if you wouldn't mind commenting on this for me, uh, Ms. Janicek, the committee has subsequently to the initial ordinance amended the agreement as per the provisions of the agreement to change the owner of record to the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. The owner of record of what? For the pilot agreement as per the application. So what did you, you said New Jersey Sports and Exposition is now the owner of the property on, two, on Route 206? No, they're the holders of the license related to the property. They're the holder of the license. So they, they have gotten, they've gotten approval for the license? No, they're the applicant for the approval for the license. It's now in their hands as the applicant. So the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority is the applicant for the license? Along with the New Jersey Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. Okay, um, that's very confusing. It's, it's so many, it seems so, for lack of a better word, contrived because no one has gotten an application yet. Meanwhile, they, there's no a one has gotten a, No one has gotten approval yet, ma'am. No one has they, gotten approval. The application's been made and submitted to the Racing Commission, and a hearing was conducted on it months ago, month, a couple of months ago now. In July, yes, I know. And um, so how does that process work? I mean, one person, one entity has to apply, then they see if they get approval, and then there would be another step where this seems like everything is already there's no other step. They made an application. The application was amended before the commission made it, had its hearing. The hearing was conducted, and now we're waiting for the Racing Commission to either want additional information or render a decision. So what happens to Ordinance 2014-05? Still remains in effect when and if the application is ever granted. Right now it's not in effect because the application has not been granted. So, but, so but just to be clear, it was it was amended, which is what just so this ordinance was amended. Correct. That's what was this was said. this uh, uh, was there a public hearing or there was it published? Was, yes. When 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 was the, when was this published? Is there any information on that? Prior when to, um, I don't know if it was done by ordinance. It's necessarily, the agreement was amended, which would the agreement was permitted to be amended pursuant mm -hmm. to the ordinance. It was not an ordinance. Sure. It was not an okay. ordinance resolution. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. It was a resolution, was it was a resolution changing the applicant as permitted by the pilot agreement. So what about the rest of the... Uh, it's all in, it all remains in effect. They accepted the terms of their end. So who, who, who applied for the tax exemption under the long-term tax exemption law? The current applicant of the, which is ostensibly the Sports and Exposition Authority and the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. Is that who, under Ordinance 2014-05, is that who originally applied, or was it Darby who applied for the long term? Darby was the original applicant. They have been substituted by the group I've just acknowledged to you, and they, are, they have accepted the obligation of the agreement when and if the agreement ever goes into effect. So is there any information as to how they qualify for this long-term tax exemption? That's pursuant to part of the application to be approved by the New Jersey Racing Commission. Now, why did Darby originally apply when at the New Jersey Racing Commission it was stated that only the New Jersey, New Jersey Sports Exposition or the Horsemen's Associations could apply? How, how is it that Darby Development LLC applied? Because it says here that it was the understanding of the township that Darby had applied. Darby was the original applicant. There were issues between Darby and the Sports and Exposition Authority and the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association in consultation with the Racing Commission. I understand that Darby did apply, but how were they? I just, able to Mrs. Apply? Janicek, I just answered the question. You may not like the answer, but the answer to the question is the original applicant was Darby. There were issues between Darby, the Sports and Exposition Authority, the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, and the Racing Commission, which was worked out amongst the parties. Okay, so now um, the township cannot 
refuse the OTW establishment if it's in a commercial or light industrial zone? The township is out of the picture as the mayor and committee have indicated since the process started. Under the law, it is a decision to be rendered by the New Jersey Racing Commission. Once that is done, whether there will be further issues remains to be seen, but that's within the auspices right now of the Racing Commission. So who approves the Racing Commission and who else? Ultim uh, to some extent, the New Jersey Attorney General. So a gambling establishment will be a permitted use in the in commercial zone and in a light industrial zone? Mrs. Janicek, the issue of the zoning is outside the jurisdiction of the municipality pursuant to an overriding state law, which we have been previously advised. It hasn't changed. The zoning is not the per se, necessarily per se the issue. It's the location and whether they can get approval from the New Jersey Racing Commission, whether the zone was commercial or light industrial or economic development as long as it wasn't residential. So that rule overrides zoning ordinance of, the, of, of Hillsborough? Yes. yes. So once again, to be clear, a gambling establishment will be permitted in a commercial zone or in a light industrial zone? A in state, a state, a, a, sta a state, state authorized wagering establishment pursuant to state statute may be permitted at that location. Is there a question you have regarding zoning? Well, I, I, I my question had been how, how, uh, uh, how has the zoning ordinance been changed since gambling it, establishment it, is going to be? It hasn't been. We it hasn't any been zoning changed. Zoning ordinances, nor would we. It's, this is all state I'm regulated. So, I'm sorry. What? There's no zoning changes. If that's your question, there are no zoning changes. Well, how can how can a business be allowed to exist in the municipality if if it's not? Because Mrs. Because Janicek, law. Mrs. Yeah. Janicek, as I've told you before tonight and prior, state law can supersede a local zoning ordinance if it meets the criteria set forth under the state law and this is a possible situation depending upon the decision of the New Jersey Racing Commission. Generally a wagering establishment will not be permitted under the zoning ordinances of this municipality but there is a state law that potentially overrides it. Now that's state law. Um, I understand that Senator Bateman and I think um, Jack Chatterelli and the assembly, the assembly, the they, legislative they delegation has submitted a bill before the legislature, which is in committee, to change the law to allow for local control and override. But that's that's going to be too late to stop the the, the OTW establishment in Hillsborough. I have no idea whether it will or won't. The racing commission hasn't ruled, and the legislature hasn't taken an action. Okay, who, who uh, um, transferred, who drafted Ordinance 2014-05? I did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening, not on, if on matters not yeah, on the agenda? So. Okay, seeing none, moving on to public hearings 2015-16, an ordinance to amend and supplement an ordinance entitled Salary Range Ordinance, establishing a new classification setting forth the salary range. We have a motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2015-16. So moved. Second. Thank you. May I have a, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, is there any discussion from the dais? <coughs> discussion from the floor? Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2015-16. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you all. Uh, roll call, please. Committee Mandel Corps. Yes. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Committee Men Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, ordinance 2015 17, an ordinance authorizing disbursement in the amount of 500000 from the Township of Hillsborough's Open Space Trust Fund to assist the County of Somerset in the purchase of the property identified on the Township of Hillsborough tax map as Block 169, Lots 4.02 and 4.03 for open space. Somerset County has acquired a right to purchase this 78-acre 78 par parcel, and the township will be participating in the purchasing of this property with a contribution of 500000 from the Open Space Trust account. 
I may have a motion to open the public hearing on ordinance 2015-17. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, is there any discussion from the dais? Uh, yes, Mayor. This, um, we looked at this uh, as part of the open space uh, committee, uh, as I am the liaison there, uh, to, uh, to support the, the purchase of the property. Uh, there is other surrounding property in the area. It's consistent with the uh, open space directive and plan that the township has, and that uh, there is uh, other areas uh, adjacent to that that is also currently uh, under uh, under open space provision. So uh, this is a nice parcel, uh, one that uh, we certainly want to support the uh, the county in the purchase of, and uh, makes a lot of sense given the where it sits on the map. Thank you. Any other comments from the days? Seeing none, discussion from the floor. Seeing none, we have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt ordinance 2015-17. Move to close and adopt. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Committee Mendel Yes. Committee Will McCauley. Yes. Committee Mr. Rachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to introduction of new ordinances, 2015-18, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of right-of-way dedication, Block 148, Lot 24, deed of dedication, Block 184, Lot 24, site triangle easements, Block 180, 148, Lots 24.04, 24.07, stormwater easements, Block 148, Lots 24.01, 24.02, 24.07, and conservation easements, Block 148, Lot 24.01, 24.02, 24.03, 24.05, from WSH Enterprises, Inc. Further consideration of this ordinance and public hearing will be held on October 13, 2015. This ordinance allows the township to accept various easements and right-of-ways of required conditions of the Planning Board approval. Local land and building law only allows the municipality to accept land or interest in land through the adoption of an ordinance. This has been reviewed and found acceptable by our township attorney. We have a motion to introduce this ordinance. So moved. Okay. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mayor <coughs> Delcor. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Bichette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to Ordinance 2015-19, in ordinance amending Chapter 143, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 22, Hillsborough Middle School, Section 143-71. Statutory authority regulations of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, and further consideration of this ordinance in public hearing will be held on October 13, 2015, in collaboration effort through a meeting held last week with the Township the Police Department, the School Administration. It was determined that the previously established traffic regulations needed to be amended. I have a motion to introduce this ordinance. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Delcor. Yes. Commander McCauley. Yes. Commander Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to considerations this evening. Consideration number one: a resolution ratifying and confirming the contract with Mazer Consulting for professional services required for the installation of emergency generator in an amount not to exceed seven thousand four hundred fifty dollars. As a result, the emergency generation being hardwired into the existing system, signed and sealed plans by a certified engineer were necessary. Hence, Mazer Consulting was required to complete the work. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Delcor. Yes. Commander McCauley. Yes. Commander Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Bichette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Resolution number two uh, to renew the Hillsborough. BPOE Lodge of 2,119, uh, Manville Hillsborough, BPOE Lodge 2119, liquor license 1810-31-001-2015-2016 license term. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Delcor. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to the consent agenda this evening. May have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? It's a long one. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the comment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any comments? From the dais? No. Yeah. Comments from the floor? It's a long one. Yeah. Please. <laughs> 
State your name and address for the record, please. Susan Gulliford, Hunt Club Road. Could you just go into um, resolution number 20, the one about the liquor license? Sure. Thank and you. <coughs> Ms. Park, please correct me if I misrepresent any of this. Uh, because the liquor license was a pocket license for over a two-year period, um, it can't be approved by the conventional way uh, that liquor licenses are approved. It has to get appro approval from the ABC down at state. So in order to do that, uh, we have to rescind the renewal that was given, and they have to apply to the state uh, for that pocket, that license that sat for two years. Correct. Is that correct? Is that good? It's called a 1239 special ruling, and we're waiting for the director of the division to give that um, approval. Okay. okay. Um, any other comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Dalcourt. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Moving on to the claims list this evening, we have a motion to approve claims list 2015-16. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Delcourt. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. We have a motion to approve claims list 2015-17. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Delcourt. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Burchette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. This concludes our regular meeting this evening, but we do have an executive session uh, tonight. So, Ms. Brock, please read the executive resolution. We're in Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Township Committee, Township of Hillsborough, and the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, as follows. Number one, the subject. The public shall be excluded from discussion in the here and after specified subject matters. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows, litigation, affordable housing, B, attorney-client privilege. Number three, the Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive session upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of the discussion shall be made available to the public as soon as the matters under discussion are no longer of a confidential or sensitive nature. And number five, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Okay. I have a motion to go into executive session? So, so moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commander Delcourt. Yes. Commander McCauley. Yes. Commander Sirachi. Yes. Deputy Mayor Bichette. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. We are now in executive session. Thank you for attending the evening tonight. The meeting.